Hello, this is Martin. Um, up here in beautiful California, bringing you a another video. This one, an instructional one, not a bike test. This one is going to explain bike gearing. Now, there's a number of ways you can get multiple speeds on a bike. One is internal gearing, uh, and another is the more typical. <clears throat> derailleur type gear and today we're going to be talking about the most typical and that is the the multi-speed bike like this one here with uh, multiple multiple gears so the first thing when you look at specs you will find uh, you see these numbers after the word cassette or you see these numbers after the word uh, crank set and what they're actually describing is nothing more than the number of teeth on each sprocket. So, on a, on a typical multi-speed bike like this one, we have three sprockets on the front, and this one has eight on the rear. So when you're looking at the crank set specs, you'll see three different numbers for this crank set. And they'll be describing the number of teeth on each one of these gears. Then when you see the cassette specs, after the cassette, they will um, they will explain that it's eight speed. Uh, most of the time they do not list the individual, uh, ind individual cogs. Um, each, each gear on the rear is called a cog, and when you put eight of them together, or you put, or, However many you have, when you put them together, they're called a, you know, a cassette. Uh, in the old days, they, they were called freewheels, and that was a little different. It, it's just a different mounting technique. But uh, so today, I wanted to explain, you know, why do we have so many gears on this bike with the eight gears on the rear and three gears on the front. It gives me a total of 24 gears. That doesn't mean all the gears are usable, but I have 24 gears, and most people would go, what, <laughs> what the heck do you need 24 gears for? But the idea is, if you, uh, if you look at the big uh, tr tractor trailer semis on the road, they have a lot of gears too, and it's just a basic uh, matter of uh, power to weight. And as a human being, Unfortunately, we do not possess very much power compared to a semi-truck or a automobile or even a single horse. Uh, so in terms of horsepower, most of us have maybe anywhere from 1 16th to 1 8th horsepower. Maybe the really good racers have half a horsepower, but that's about all you have. So with that small amount of horsepower, we need lots of gears to make up the difference and uh, that's how we can go down the road at high speeds or climb steep hills uh, uh, more easily. One of the main reasons there's so many gears is for one you want to have more than one pedal stroke so for beginners out there if you don't understand how many different pedal strokes there are you are really handicapping yourself when you go for a ride. If all you're gonna do is pedal in the same way, you will use the exact same muscles all day long and never, and never give any a break. Uh, most, people, most people have different ratios of what's called fast twitch and slow twitch fibers, and you, I'm sure you've probably heard that before. Uh, the fast twitch are more endurance type, and the slow tw twitch are the uh, more power or heavy lifting uh, muscle fibers. So as you shift gears between a lighter gear and go with a faster cadence or a faster spin on the cranks, you are using a different set of muscle fibers as you would on a lower or in a higher gear setting and a lower RPM on the, on the crank. So these multi-speed gear bikes give you the opportunity of Changing, you know, changing gears to allow for different cadences and to give certain muscles a rest. After you, uh, after you work on your spin, 
is what it's called. That's developing a very smooth pedal stroke over a wide range of RPMs. Uh, your RPM range should be anywhere from maybe 80 per minute to 120 per minute. Uh, a really good rider can be very comfortable at a 100 RPM pace. Anything below 80 and you are probably risking uh, damaging your knees. There are always exceptions to this rule. There are people out there that are God-given talent and they can do everything wrong and never get hurt. But for most of us, like me, if I was to pedal around at 60 RPMs, my knees would be shot and I'd have to give up my cycle. So I have to be very careful, warm my knees up slowly, and, uh, and use the gears in the most efficient manner. So, with, with that being said, and the, uh, and the different cadences I'm talking about, that determines which gear you are going to be using. So, the larger gears, as you're maybe going downhill or with strong wind, you'll be able to use those larger gears, keep up a steady 90 RPM, maybe 100 RPM cadence on that crank, pedaling away, and uh, maybe going down the road at probably 25 miles an hour. In contrast to that, if you're climbing an extremely steep hill, and you're very, very low gear, and I'll explain the high low gear ratios. If you're in very low gear, you'll still be at that 90 RPM, but you're only going to be moving about 5 miles an hour. And that's the mountain bike. And uh, this particular bike has a mountain bike gear range. That's the kind of range you can have uh, in, in pedal cadence or pedal spin. And when I refer to cadence, that is uh, it's, it's a general term. And then when I refer to a number, that's how many pedal strokes you are making, a complete pedal stroke, how many per minute. I want most people to be at the 80 to 100 RPM time. Uh, when you're climbing an extremely steep hill, you may have trouble even staying at 80. That's the target. And you want to be as smooth as possible at those cadences too. And it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of practice. It's a, it's a high skilled cycling skill. It takes a lot of practice, and uh, you practice it for life. I, uh, every, you know, I'm concentrating on it uh, on some days and not on others, but it uh, depends on what kind of training I'm doing for the day. So let's uh, talk about the gear uh, ratios. If, if you got into bikes a little deeper than most people do, then you'll notice there are gear ratios or gear inches. Uh, gear ratios are something that, uh, as far as I know, nobody uses those. They're available if you want them. But uh, the gear inches is a more practical <coughs> way of describing gears uh, to a cyclist. And I'm going to explain how that works. The gear inch, when figured out on a chart, is how far the uh, bike will travel in one revolution of the crank. So, in this particular gear here, if I was to revolve the crank one revolution, that's one complete crank revolution, this is how far the bike travels. Now, if I was to shift the gears down into something much smaller. And I do the same thing. I have a one rotation of the crank. And I want to go this far. Now as I go to one of the higher gears, and I'll explain the high lows in a minute. And I'm going to do one rotation of the crank again.
and I, I walked completely out of the camera range because that gear was that gear was so high. I walked about uh, about 20 feet down there. So that's the difference between the high gear and a low gear. Now, high gear is the one that you might consider uh, you know, uh, what you might call the hardest one to pedal. If you put it in the highest gear, it's it's the hardest one to pedal because uh, in leverage terms, you're moving extremely far for one rotation of the crank. So the, the high-low gears work a little confusing, but uh, stay with me. On the front, we're talking about just the front crank set gears, the larger the gear, the higher the gear. The smaller the gear, the lower the gear. And the high, again, is the one that, you, that you'd use to go the fastest, and the low is the one you use to climb hills. It's the one that really gears you down, and, and as you're spinning away, you're barely moving at all. The high gear is the one you, if you're really moving that, you're really going fast down the hill. And then you've got all the gears in between, of course. So on the front, the largest chain, these are, on the front, these are called chain rings. On the rear, they're called cogs, and that's the individual gear up here. So this bike has three gears on the, on the front. So it has three chain rings. So the smallest chain ring on this one is the lowest gear. The middle chain ring is a middle range gear. And the largest chain ring, this one on the outside, the largest chain ring is the highest gear. How confusing is this sound? On the rear, it's just the opposite. The larger the cog on the rear, the lower the gear, and the higher the cog, the higher the gear. So your highest gear on your bike is the large chain ring on the front and the smallest cog on the rear. And in the opposite of that, the lowest gear on your bike is the smallest chain ring on the front and the largest cog on the rear. And as you shift in between there, that's your mid-range. Now there, the gears you are not supposed to use on a bike because they are not really designed to be used. On this, this particular bike has an eight-speed cassette. Uh, they call it eight-speed because there's eight cogs. But when you combine it with a triple chain ring up front, which three has three chain rings, you multiply that by three. So eight times three is 24. This is called a 24-speed bike. So the gears you are not supposed to use on this 8-speed bike is the large chain ring on the front. And this is the extremes that I'm just talking about. And that's the large chain ring on the front and the smallest cog on the rear. And on the opposite end of that, you really don't use the smallest chain ring on the front and the smallest cog on the rear. And on the triple chain ring setup, you usually don't use the last three or four smallest cogs on the rear. It's really not designed to use those. The small chain ring on the front is just a gear that you're using the very lowest gears to climb in the steepest hills. So, um, uh, it's probably pretty confusing for everyone, but uh, let's look at it from the shifter point with the little numbers up here. If you have uh, flat bars, you probably have shifters that have numbers on them. If you have the drop bars, then you then you won't have the numbers to actually look at them. They're, they're levers, uh, the shifters are the brake levers. But uh, let's go with this assumption that uh, um, even if you have a drop bar, you can, um, you can count the clicks and uh, call those the numbers of gears. So on the front, on the right side, I control my rear, my rear gear, my rear cogs, my rear derailleur on the right side. So I have eight different clicks on my right shift lever. On my left shift lever, I'm controlling the front three chain rings. So there's only three gears on, the, on this left control. So between these two, 
I can pick any gear I want. So if I wanted the lowest gear on my bike to climb the steepest hill, I would shift the left one to number one. Number one gear on the, the left one goes to the front. I would shift it to number one and I would get the smallest chain ring on the front. Then on my right shift lever, which is my rear derailleur, my rear gears, I would shift that to number one. So left is number one, right is number one. And that is the lowest gear I'm gonna have on my bike. I'm climbing, the, I'm climbing my steepest hill with that one. Then as I get over the top of the hill, I'll probably shift up a little bit and I can do it one of two ways. I can use the left one and shift the front sprockets, or the front chain rings. If I use the left shift lever and use the front chain rings and shift to number two, I will get a nice jump in gear that uh, would be larger shift than if I use the, the rear shift. Now, of course, this depends partially on, on the gear spacing you have on the rear, but you have uh, two choices when you shift up from the lowest gear. You can go to the, you can use the front and go up one gear, or you can use the rear and maybe go up two gears to be the equivalent. The way the gear ratios work on most bike setups is there's usually a 10 tooth um, difference between each chain ring. So this one, this setup is mountain bike setup. So the smallest one's 22, the middle one's 32, and the largest one's 42. Those 10 tooth jumps on the front are uh, much in, in the terms of gear inches or in terms of gear ratios or, or gaps in, uh, in how hard or easy it was to pedal. On the front, it's quite different than the rear. So if I shift up 10 teeth, and that would be shifting from my 22 small to my 32 middle ring, that's 10 teeth difference. And as you remember, as we go up in teeth on, on the front, you get a higher gear. So 10 teeth on the front is only equal to uh, about, um, half the amount of teeth on the rear. This is a very confusing subject and I hope you can stay with me on this one. Now on the rear, this one's an eight cog and I have not counted these cogs but I know the, the, the smallest one's 11 and I know the largest one's 34. That means there's a 34 teeth on the largest cog and the smallest cog has 11 teeth. Now when we go back to the gear inches, when I talk about gear inches, remember when I did one crank revolution, when I did one crank revolution, in the lower gears you saw the bike move very little, and in the high gears it moved right off the camera. So there is a difference between each one of these gears. Now the spacing between these gears as they go from 11 to and higher and higher is different. In, in this case, this one goes from 11 teeth to 13 teeth. It skips it skips one. It doesn't go from 11 teeth to 12. It goes from 11 to 13, and then 13 to 15, and then like 15 to 20, and 20 to 26, and then I'm just guessing on those gears because I didn't count them. But, but each one of those gaps are you can see they, they get a larger gap as you go to the, to the larger cog. And this is a mechanical thing. The difference between the, the 11 tooth and the 12 tooth is very large. Or the difference between a 31 tooth and, and a 32 tooth on the rear is very, very small. So in terms of gear inches, you want only one tooth apart 
as you get towards the very high end of your gear. You want to keep it at like at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And when you get to maybe 15 or 16, you can start gapping them out. Now ideally, this is the way you want it because then each spacing between the gears as you shift, they're all going to feel about the same. But, the engineers in the bike industry don't do that for us. Instead, they like to gap them out so that, they're, uh, so that the teeth numbers are gapped out the same. Well, that doesn't work. Um, I don't know why the bike industry does it. It's done this forever. Back in the old days, I would have my free wheels custom built so that I could get the correct gap gearing. So what you have is, you have these huge gaps in the high end of your gear and then you have the smaller gaps as you, as you go up because they didn't do it right. Um, this is going to be my little complaint session, but um, the, way you, the way you would set up a gearing is like I said, at the very high end of the gear you want the 11 and then you want one as close to that as possible, the 12. And then next to that, as close as possible, a 13. Next to that, as close as possible, a 14 tooth. And then a 15 tooth. And then a 16 tooth. And by the time you've gotten to about 16, you can then start skipping teeth. Because that, like I said, I'm trying to get these as even as possible so that every shift feels about the same. Um, the way these are set up now, when you shift from the 12 from a 13 to 11, you got this gigantic g gap. And it's it's like going from, you're pedaling like this and you shift, and now you're grinding away because there's such a huge gap in the gear. And I hope I'm explaining this well enough for you, but the, that's the problem with the cassettes that you buy today. You're going to not have an even, even shift throughout your entire range because the engineers that are designing these aren't doing them correctly. So if you're wondering why when you're in a high gear moving along real fast you make a shift and it's a great big ju jump in gear and you know, all of a sudden you're going like this, pedaling like this, and then you're pedaling like this. It's because of the, the gearing gap is too, is too wide. Now the closest gaps you can do of course is just one tooth difference but uh, they're not doing that for us so this has been a very confusing engineering report for most of you but I'm going to kind of summarize and hope to uh, hope to clear it up so on the very basic levels we have two sets of gears we have rear gears and we have front gears we have a we have a derailleur that shifts the gears in the rear, and we have a derailleur that shifts the gears in the front. The front gears are called chain rings. The rear gears individually are called cogs. The front gear is called the crank set, and that includes the uh, everything, the uh, arms and the gears. And then the rear is called the cassette, or if you have an old-fashioned one, it's, um, it's called a freewheel, but freewheels aren't used much anymore. So on the front of this bike we have three chain rings. On the rear we have eight. So we take eight times three and we come up with a 24 speed bike. Gearing range, we use the teeth to describe the gearing range. On the front I have a 22, a 32, and a 42 tooth chain ring. That, that tells me that this is a low geared bike and it's designed for uh, maybe mountain biking because it's, it's, it's the lowest gearing you can buy for a, chain, for a front chain ring, at least today. And the rear goes from 11 to a 34, which is one of the widest ranges you can get. And it's also telling me that's probably mountain bike gearing doesn't have to be. In this case, this is not set up as a mountain bike, it's set up as a touring bike for me. But since I'm pulling a trailer up the side of a mountain for 20 miles, 
I chose to have mountain bike gearing. So this bike is very low geared. It's, low, it's geared as low as a, as a uh, mountain bike. And as far as the high gears go, um, when you're pulling a trailer and you have all this weight, you can't use them anyway. So this is the perfect gearing for a touring bike. So now that we have multiplied these two together and we know we have 24 gears, as we shift between the two, to go to, go to the lowest gear you have on the bike, you shift from the front to the smallest chain ring, and on the rear, you shift to the largest car. And on your gear shift levers, that would mean on your left, which controls your front chain rings, would be a number one, and on your right, which controls the rear cogs, it's a number one. So number one, number one equals your lowest gear. On the opposite side of that, on the left, which controls your front chain rings, front derailleur, you would be a number three, and on my right, which controls the rear derailleur and the cogs, you would be a number eight. So gear, gear, gear numbers on your shift levers would call it three and eight for your highest gear, and one and one for your lowest gear. They're calling, they're calling the numbers from on the chain rings from the smallest to the largest. The smallest is number one, the middle is number two, the largest is number three. On the rear, number one is your largest cog, and, and number eight is your smallest cog. Pretty confusing for someone that uh, doesn't quite understand this. So, I hope, I hope this has been a help to you. If not, um, give me a response and uh, I'll, try and, uh, I'll try and do another video that uh, might be more clear than this one. Thanks for listening.